take picture. I think I might be taking picture. <laughs> Boy. Okay, that's picture. Now you got me happy. Yeah, yeah. Hello. There at the tawny, just an occasional birds chirping in the pit may throw. This is our veranda and taken round the corner showing the upstairs flat. The neighbours and the general outlook from our flat. Okay. Anti on the veranda. Coffee, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> well, no. Found. And rusks. Mm mm mm. Mm mm. Mother is searching as usual. Tell me. And that such is the home comforts. Lounge wise, standing from the kitchen. And of such is the kitchen window. And as such is the bedroom. There's also the view from the bedroom. All mod cons in the garage facilities. And all in all, our home away from home, including an upstairs facility which contained na neighbours that squawk squawked loudly with rubber shoes in the very early morning. Talking of which, I should show the ceiling which consists of a probably 20 to 30 millimetre board separating us from those upstairs uh, neighbors. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, maybe I, the signal's going. Okay, let me get out on the road. A the monkey road. invader. Yeah. Yesterday he got in and swiped all our bananas. Mm -hmm. Well, he had about three left. This is a daily occurrence. Fortunately, the window's closed today. I wonder why. Man, tell him I hope he gets better soon, soon. Tell him it's not on. A doctor does not have accidents. <laughs> doctor, heal thyself. Anyway, goodbye love to everybody. Hello, how are you? Okay, have a good holiday. Oh, good, good. Yeah, we're having a very quiet time here. Then he's just chasing a monkey away from our flat. It's looking in the kitchen window. As I said to Nathan, it stole was some bananas yesterday. Yeah. Now that is mother examining giraffe spur. You can see it. An awful lot they've really churned up and there seems to be a family of giraffes. There's bigger ones and smaller ones. And that's what the giraffe spur looks like. This is a view from what we might call giraffe walk. We saw a giraffe the other day. Looking at the view. Beautiful view. Beautiful, beautiful. And a beautiful mum. Okay, I got you. Down the rocky path, the intrepid mother went. The rock still a little right of her. Rock sit underneath foot, stumbling and starting. Down she went.
There's a time in the evening when an absolute hush comes over this place. A fascinating feature right over the valley there. There's these long slim trees with a bushy little top. Myrtle, of course, calls them aloes. Aloes, huh? Trees! Ah, I can't hold it. Again, again I say trees. Trees. Again, again I say tree. Ah. Uh, again I say trees. So before you think, huh? What's going on with that man? Where's his mane? I'll tell you. Now these two lions was found by um, by Animal Defenders International, where they were saved from a circus in Portugal. And unfortunately, some uh, circuses believe if you castrate or spade a male lion at a very young age. Now they say a tiger like a Bengal tiger can live up to 16 years old. Now uh, in the wild and well, well over 20 years in captivity. But if you have a look at Lazy Old Tarzan over here, he won't say he's just a little bit older than 17 years. 18 to 20 months old. So for now, they're still bonding quite strong. But you don't have to worry, we're still going to see a lot more of them. And that's said to kill off the bacteria on their feathers and of course that is an also an easy way to heat up their bodies before they take flight now african wild dogs became endangered mainly because of farmers that shoot to kill on site and as well putting out poisoned meat because these dogs unfortunately figured out that it's so much easier to go out and hunt sheep and cattle to actually go out and hunt game animals like impalas and i mean a pack from 20 up until about 25 dogs can devour up to 100 kilograms of meat in less than 20 minutes you can imagine these dogs do eat a lot and they are the only ones in the pack who's allowed to mate and have pups if any other female has puppies the alpha female would go harass her and unfortunately kill all of those pups now it sounds quite vicious and unfair but it's just the way they work because they live in a very very strict social structure and they only want the strongest genes to be passed on to the next generation and the two at the back over there as we drove in now that's our alpha male and alpha female. Mm -hmm. On our way out, I'll point them out to you again. The alpha male oldest. and the alpha female. Oldest. Up quite quickly, but not in size though. And what mm. I mean by that is, they start to eat their first solid piece of meat at the young age of uh, two and a half to three weeks, which the sub-adults will come and regurgitate for them. And they are forcibly weaned from their mother at a young and tender age of five and a half to six weeks. But the alpha female is quite a small skinny little girl, she's got a piercing in her one ear and as well no tail. But believe me, she's a feisty little character and that's exactly how she became the alpha. Well, you all need a scratch now yeah. okay. <laughs> You'll see that they all are very very skinny. But that's because I consider a cheetah to be quite lucky. Because they are naturally skinny cats and built for nothing else except for speed. That's what I've got a long slender body and tail the small rounded head and the rounded ears just to make them more aerodynamic for speed of course well a cheetah out in the wild will only eat on average about every uh, second to third day sometimes even every fifth day but a cheetah mom, mom, a mother with cubs will have to hunt about every day just to um, feed the cubs as well when they are about more than four weeks old or two and a half months old and they will probably eat anything from about seven or five to uh, twelve kgs of meat a day Tiki tiki, now it's pretty cat. Look there. Pretty cat does want to look. Those black chair marks are like the natural sunglasses. Because cheetahs are the urnal hunters, which means they will hunt uh, out mainly at daytime when the sun is out, those black stripes underneath the eyes will of course absorb the sunlight and when it does, will take away the glare from glass water and even sand particles, which enables these guys to hunt a lot better. Early 1900s in Zimbabwe, where the scientists thought, wow, it's a whole new species of cheetahs. But then after studying the animal for quite some time, they realized it's exactly the same. But still today, because it's called a king cheetah and they look like that, people think they've got some superpower, that they're faster, stronger and smarter than all the other cheetahs around. Well, it's not true, they're exactly, exactly the same. The only difference is between the two us, the ones got spots, and the king cheetah stripes, spots and blotches. It's just a recessive gene pool that gives him these unique markings. And his name is Michael, named after Princess Michael of Kent. So he is real royal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Now, does anyone know what's the top speed of a cheetah? Isn't it 120 or something ridiculous? No, not really 120. Oh. Let's look at that. Now, they say a cheetah can reach a top speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Now, that's an easy thing for us humans to say, but which has never been proven. But which has been proven is a top speed of 110 to 112 kilometers per hour. But they average only about 100 kilometers at a time. But these guys are able to reach those top speeds, mainly because they've got those non-retractable claws, which is always out, which help them to grip into the ground. And of course, a very, very hard pad. Yeah. Yeah. Quite an aggressive type of antelope, and our bull's nickname is Psycho Sable. The bull, much bigger than ours, was sold for 3.3 million rand just for breeding purposes. So you can imagine they're not that endangered anymore. Now, as you can see, both of the sexes has got the horns. These cows at the back. So to distinguish between male and female, it's still easy. Males, of course, has to be more beautiful. They've got a dark, shiny black coat, and the female is a dull brownish color, but she's still as beautiful. And the other way she can tell us, her horns is a lot skinnier and doesn't curve all the way back and she's a lot skinnier herself. She's just not sheep, sure what's sheep, going on. No, You've got a sheep that's very interested in those fairs. Ah. Sheep to mummy and, and zebra's the baby. Oopsie. <laughs> 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 Oh, no, 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 Never mind the yard. Four. four. Down and four. I'm sure that's still recording. Huh? I'm sure it's still recording. Let's come here and see. I pressed this button again. Okay. It still says REC. Oh, then that's. I will put. Uh, where's it? Par 3 6. Ooh, not a bad shot. See how this one goes. It's uphill all the way. Yo, yo. Uh, it's a pretty good one if it doesn't it holds. Gonna be in trouble here. Okay, two. Uh. No. Huh. Animals, but a pretty flower. <laughs> a 
approaching Burgess Fort. Even reindeer we got here. This is where we think we stayed the last time we were here. Where we spent many happy hours in the jacuzzi. The entertainment area where we had many, many pleasant evenings. And the bar. Monkeys tea off on the 13th. Our humble abode, which we will be taking leave of tomorrow morning early. <laughs> 